Okay, uh, I'm very glad to present my lecture here because uh, it's my uh, first uh, conference, uh, dumb deed conference, uh, uh, but I was uh, already uh, very impressed of uh, uh, the lectures of uh, the people here. And uh, uh, I also uh, acknowledge uh, uh, the organizers of this conference uh, for inviting me, uh, but uh, uh, my talk probably will differ from uh, many other talks uh, here because uh, I am from uh, some subject area. I am a chemist uh, by education, and I will present uh, not uh, the methods, not theories uh, concerning uh, processing data, but uh, mainly uh, preparation, methods of uh, preparation such data and uh, 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 representation of this data. Uh, because uh, again, I am from an area where there are a lot of data, uh, very good uh, experimentally determined data, but they uh, still do not uh, not even uh, prepared, uh, good prepared, but uh, even classified uh, for such. А вообще их загружал в систему номер 19. So uh, the main purpose of my lecture uh, is to uh, show that uh, there are such data, there is a good deal of such data, uh, mm, and uh, they can be processed uh, using uh, machine learning methods, using uh, um, artificial intelligence methods, but uh, they still uh, remain, let's say, uh, uh, not processed, and uh, we need uh, uh, still uh, to uh, to do uh, to do a lot of work uh, for presenting this data for uh, the subsequent processing. Okay, thanks. Uh, so, uh, as you see, uh, the talk of my lecture concerns uh, topological methods and the corresponding tool for uh, tools for the analysis of crystallographic data. Uh, special kind of data. So uh, the first question uh, we should answer, uh, why and what is topology concerning crystal structures? I believe that uh, all uh, people in this audience uh, know what is topology, but uh, the question is uh, what is topology with relation to uh, crystallography and to uh, crystal structures? Uh, uh, but first of all, uh, let's answer the question, why uh, do we need modeling in uh, materials science? Again, probably you know that uh, there is a special uh, worldwide program uh, called uh, Materials Genome, which was uh, started in, in uh, 2011. Uh, and uh, the main purpose of this, pro of this program is to develop uh, special methods for processing uh, experimental and theoretical data on crystal structures and materials and uh, to, uh, um, uh, to uh, increase the speed of incorporating new materials into our life uh, from uh, approximately 10, 20 hours, uh, 20, 10, 20 uh, years at uh, uh, this time to two or three Yes, so uh, 10 times uh, faster. And uh, the main solution is uh, uh, incorporating algorithms uh, and software and also data exchange systems into this area. And uh, uh, modeling can help uh, uh, at least uh, at first four stages uh, um, to develop uh, these new materials. Uh, so it's uh, really, uh, important and uh, this program uh, more or less uh, successfully uh, uh, developed uh, during these years and uh, uh, already uh, we have a lot of examples of uh, 
successful application applications of this program uh, but uh, uh, still there are many issues here and uh, uh, to solve uh, uh, such issues uh, we could use uh, special methods uh, for processing such data and these are topological methods so why do we need uh, mainly uh, namely topological methods let's uh, look at this uh, pretty girl uh, she's trying to uh, understand uh, this uh, uh, crystal structure very very weird crystal structure uh, very complicated and of course uh, she's doing this uh, uh, using uh, her own subjective view of this structure. And as a result, uh, she gets mainly subjective description of uh, uh, this uh, object. But we need to replace uh, this picture with some uh, numerical parameters, which are, can be computed uh, automatically according to strict uh, algorithms. And uh, in this case, uh, the result will be uh, will be independent of the view of a particular uh, researcher. And uh, this means that uh, it will be objective. The next point is uh, that we have uh, now really a huge amount of data, uh, both experimental and uh, theoretical data on crystal structures, uh, which uh, are collected in worldwide databases. Uh, here I show uh, four most well-known databases in the world and uh, actually i like uh, uh, this uh, paper uh, published one of uh, by one of uh, the founders of uh, the cambridge structural database the largest database in this field sam motherwell uh, and uh, the title of this uh, uh, paper uh, sounds like uh, uh, the Cambridge Structural Database, uh, uh, 450,000 answers. But what are the questions? Uh, at that time, uh, it was uh, almost uh, now already more than 10 years ago, uh, uh, Cambridge Structural Database contained uh, just uh, less than half million uh, structural data, answers, answers from nature, let's say. Uh, because any experiment uh, get, uh, give, uh, gives us uh, some answer from nature. But now uh, Cambridge Structural Database contains more than 1 million um, uh, results, experimental data. But uh, again, we have no questions, real questions. We cannot formulate these questions to the nature. And topological methods can help us to do this. Uh, uh, now, what is topology? Uh, we can answer these questions with, with this question uh, in different ways. Uh, of course, we can take a formal definition from general topology. And in this case, we should uh, determine uh, the so-called topological space. But uh, it's important how it looks uh, uh, with uh, application to crystal structures. Uh, for crystal structures, we have just a set of atoms from experiment or from um, uh, theoretical modeling. This is just a set of atoms in the space with some coordinates. And importantly, uh, this uh, set has a, a translational symmetry. So it is uh, formally infinite. Okay, but uh, there is no connections between these atoms uh, and uh, the topology in this system is trivial. Then we should specify some topology on this uh, uh, topological space. And uh, uh, by definition, topology is a set of, sub of subsets from this uh, topological space. And we can choose these subsets in quite different ways. For example, we can take pairs of uh, uh, atoms, and this means that we specify bones between them. This is the simplest way, and as, as a result, we get just uh, some graph uh, on this uh, uh, set of atoms. But we can choose, uh, for example, triples uh, of atoms in this way. And uh, this also has some meaning because uh, this triangle in this case shows us uh, 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 some hole in this structure. And uh, this, is, this can be also important for applications. 
We can choose triples uh, in another way, and uh, in this case, it's uh, already not so easy to say, to explain what is the meaning, physical or chemical meaning of this uh, choice. But anyway, uh, we can choose uh, topologies uh, in infinite number of ways, and the point is that uh, which of them have uh, some uh, meaning for our applications. This is important. Uh, next, uh, we can determine topological objects in this space, again, by different ways. Uh, atom is a trivial object because uh, it has no topology inside. Uh, but uh, we have also a chemical bond, uh, which is uh, already not a trivial object. We can use other uh, other uh, objects also like uh, coordination polyhedron structural unit of any complexity network infinite network as a whole also is an object entanglement uh, uh, of different networks uh, uh, and uh, for example tiling which shows us uh, uh, cages uh, in this uh, structure so uh, quite different objects and again the number of such objects uh, formally is infinite Next, uh, when we choose uh, the object, we can uh, determine the so-called underlying topology, uh, which is the topology of these objects, uh, the topology of the set of these objects. Uh, this is a trivial uh, underlying topology because it coincides with the initial topology of the structure. But then we can uh, choose uh, uh, some objects inside this uh, um, inside this uh, structure, for example, molecules uh, here in uh, this uh, formamide polymorph and uh, the black uh, uh, network shows us uh, uh, the network of centers of uh, mass or centers of gravity of uh, these objects. So we simplify our structure and we determine just uh, the method of connections between the objects uh, uh, complicated objects uh, in this structure. Uh, then as a result, we get uh, some structure representation. And again, formally we have infinite number of such representations. Let's consider one of the most uh, complicated uh, uh, inorganic structures, uh, uh, zeolite uh, polingite. This is a mineral. Uh, which exists in nature also, and this is uh, uh, the general representation of this structure, which is quite weird, and uh, it's uh, uh, almost uh, impossible to understand anything from this picture. But then uh, we uh, start to choose, uh, uh, to simplify it, to choose objects. Uh, first, uh, we choose uh, uh, the framework uh, of uh, silicon and oxygen atoms, uh, which uh, contains uh, uh, other atoms inside. Then we represent uh, this framework as a set of tetrahedra, but uh, still uh, is uh, very complicated. But finally, we present this uh, structure as a set of uh, cages. And uh, this picture uh, becomes uh, already quite uh, understandable. Uh, so we see here how the free space in this structure is organized. All these, uh, uh, all these uh, steps can be done uh, quite uh, completely automatically uh, according to uh, strict algorithms and uh, we can process uh, millions of, uh, uh, of uh, records of crystal structures in the same way and uh, represent them uh, in different ways. It depends on our uh, purpose in a particular work. Uh, now, uh, uh, I uh, give here a citation from Strugatsky uh, 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 book uh, to understand means to simplify. And uh, uh, this is uh, exactly what we have uh, in our uh, examples. Uh, this is a metal organic framework, uh, very well. Uh, known framework uh, now because uh, metal organic frameworks uh, are porous materials uh, which uh, are uh, uh, strongly investigating uh, being investigated uh, during last uh, 20 years 
And this is uh, one of the first and the most famous representatives of uh, this uh, series. And this uh, structure, uh, this uh, framework looks like this, uh, but again, it's quite, uh, quite complicated. Uh, but we uh, simplified again by replacing uh, the structural units with their centers of mass. And then finally uh, simplify it even more. And uh, we get uh, the general motif uh, of this structure, which can then be uh, compared with other uh, similar motifs, uh, but uh, of different uh, chemical composition. Uh, this is one more question, uh, organic uh, structure with uh, some complicated molecules, but this green, uh, green network uh, shows us uh, uh, the centers of uh, these molecules and the connections between them. Uh, how can we simplify uh, uh, the structures? We choose uh, again, according to, uh, to some formal uh, conditions, uh, uh, the structural units. Uh, the units can be quite different by composition and by internal structure, but then we consider them as a whole and as a result, we get the same, uh, in this case, the same uh, uh, framework. Uh, after such simplification, we can determine the topology of uh, the resulting networks and uh, uh, assign, the, uh, these topology to the, assign to these topologies uh, some uh, names. And this is a nomenclature which is uh, mainly used for this purpose. So this is diamondoid, diamond actually, net uh, from uh, natural diamond. But uh, starting from this topology, we can produce uh, some related topologies. Uh, they are related to diamond uh, in some way, but they, are, they differ anyway. And uh, they are uh, uh, designated uh, starting from the diamond structure with some suffixes. Uh, how to determine the network uh, topology. For this purpose, we use a set of uh, uh, topological indices, which uh, again can be computed automatically. And uh, these are just uh, sets of uh, some numbers. I uh, do not explain in detail what are they, uh, but importantly, uh, uh, they can be represented in numerical uh, format. And uh, after this, uh, we can compare these indices with uh, the reference uh, uh, indices from the uh, topological database basis and immediately get uh, uh, the information about what is topology in our case. And uh, for this purpose, we don't need to look at this structure uh, to draw pictures, etc., etc. We just uh, run computer and get uh, the result. Um, how to determine topology again uh, um, rigorously and uh, uh, in an automated way. Uh, for this purpose, we use uh, the so-called Voronoi partition when we construct uh, Voronoi polyhedra for the atoms uh, uh, for, uh, in the crystal space. Uh, and the Voronoi polyhedron is a convex polyhedron which uh, uh, surrounds a given point or a given atom, and uh, uh, it is uh, confined by um, planes uh, passing through the centers of uh, uh, the lines uh, connecting uh, this, uh, uh, this point with uh, other uh, neighboring points uh, perpendicular to these uh, lines. And finally, we get uh, uh, this uh, space uh, which belongs to this uh, atom uh, because uh, all points inside the poly, uh, Voronoi polyhedron are closer to this central atom uh, than to any other atom of the structure. And uh, Voronoi polyhedra form uh, the so-called partition of uh, crystal space without gaps and intersections. And uh, uh, another important, uh, uh, important feature of Voronoi polyhedra is the, that uh, the uh, vertices are the most distant points from the atoms uh, in the space, and uh, they can be considered as uh, centers of uh, cavities. Uh, so this is a method of uh, uh, exploring not only the atomic space, but also the free space. 
inside a crystal. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the edges of Voronoi polyhedra can be considered as the lines of channels between uh, these uh, cages. And uh, applying some uh, geometrical uh, parameters, we can determine which atoms or molecules or other objects uh, can pass through the structure. And uh, this is important also for applications. Uh, uh, for, to, the, to explore uh, the free space, we use also another topological method uh, uh, constructing uh, the so-called tiling. Uh, tiling is based on, uh, on the network. And uh, again, according to some strict algorithm, we determine uh, the smallest cages in this network, the so-called tiles. These tiles uh, can uh, not be uh, co convex, uh, not necessarily convex, uh, and uh, can have uh, curved uh, uh, faces. But anyway, uh, they represent, uh, again, smallest cages in the structure, and uh, each uh, other cage can be constructed from these cages just by summarizing. And uh, uh, the centers of uh, these uh, tiles uh, show us, uh, uh, again, the centers of the cages and uh, the network uh, which uh, connect uh, these centers uh, called dual net uh, shows us the topology of uh, the free space. So we have two dual nets. Uh, as a result, atomic net and the net of uh, the cages. And uh, these both nets can be analyzed uh, in the same way with the same methods. Uh, this is just uh, one more example. This is a uh, uh, very well-known zeolite, porous material, gmelinite, uh, also mineral, uh, natural mineral. And uh, these are three different cages uh, in this structure. And uh, uh, this is just a picture to show how they are organized. Uh, so, uh, finally, uh, topological analysis uh, uh, gives us uh, some, important, uh, 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 some important features and uh, uh, tools uh, to analyze uh, uh, crystal structures. And importantly, as I said already, uh, we can do it uh, uh, without uh, drawing pictures, without looking at these structures and uh, using just uh, rigorous uh, algorithms. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, topological methods in crystal chemistry and material science uh, started to be used uh, uh, approximately almost uh, 30 years ago uh, in the middle of uh, the 90s. But you see uh, here uh, the progress uh, of these methods. And now al already more than 5,000 universities and the research groups uh, use uh, these methods uh, over the world and uh, uh, this number growing uh, very fast. Now uh, some words about uh, topological tools. We develop a special software for analysis of uh, crystal structures. Uh, it's called uh, Topos Pro uh, and uh, uh, you can uh, download this uh, software from our website, it's free. Uh, and uh, this is a paper where uh, the Topos Pro features were uh, described in detail. And using uh, this software, you can perform comprehensive uh, both geometrical and topological analysis of any periodic systems, not only crystal structures, but uh, you can consider also artificial networks uh, importantly, that they should have uh, uh, periodic uh, symmetry. Uh, Topos Pro now is uh, being used uh, in many countries, more than 100 countries uh, uh, in the world, uh, and many uh, users uh, uh, in different uh, fields of uh, material science use this uh, software. And also using uh, Topos Pro, we process uh, uh, the information from crystallographic databases and uh, uh, we uh, create our own databases uh, which extract topological information from uh, the initial data. Uh, uh, one of uh, the largest databases in this collection is uh, the so-called uh, TTD collection. It contains now more than 
800,000 entries. Uh, these are different topologies uh, which occur in uh, uh, experimentally determined crystal structures or theoretically modeled uh, crystal structures. And it has uh, uh, some uh, user-friendly interface to work with the, uh, this database. And this is now the largest collection of uh, periodic networks in the world. Um, another database in this series uh, is uh, uh, the topos, uh, topological types observed collection. Uh, it can, it uh, contains information about, uh, um, about occurrences of topologies in real crystal structures and uh, more than two and a half million uh, records now in this database. Uh, and again, you can uh, easily work with the, uh, this database with Topos and, uh, for example, extract the information from the occurrences uh, of a particular uh, topology and uh, about uh, uh, representatives of this topology from uh, real uh, experimental data. Uh, we have uh, some other databases, and this is uh, uh, the uh, set of these databases in our website. Uh, and uh, uh, among them, we have collections not only about crystal structures, uh, but also about uh, some, uh, some uh, structural units uh, inside these structural uh, structures, uh, objects, uh, uh, important, uh, uh, let's say, bricks uh, from which uh, these structures are uh, constructed. And this is also very important to understand uh, uh, the uh, principles of uh, the structure uh, um, uh, architecture. And uh, uh, finally, Topos Pro gives us uh, uh, the possibility to connect uh, the information from different uh, uh, specialized databases, crystallographic databases, unite this information inside the same approach. And uh, uh, we uh, can then uh, analyze all this data as a whole uh, using uh, machine learning methods, for example. Uh, we also now develop an uh, online system where the people can uh, get access to our databases and to our tools uh, through internet. You just drop your file uh, from uh, the experimental, uh, let's say, uh, from some uh, equipment. Uh, uh, for example, you just uh, determine the crystal structure in your laboratory, and you can just drop standard uh, file uh, on this structure. and. And uh, uh, immediately you will get information about the topology of this structure, occurrences of this topology in other crystal structures. And from uh, our database, you have also some interfaces to other databases, experimental databases like Cambridge Structural Database and uh, other uh, very well known crystallographic databases. Uh, TopCrist uh, gives uh, us uh, not only this uh, ability, but uh, uh, these are different, uh, uh, let's say, parts of uh, this system, and uh, uh, it, gi it gives uh, uh, the user access to almost all our databases, uh, online access, uh, and so you can find the relations between your structure and uh, other structures uh, which were determined by other people. And uh, uh, in general, Topos Pro gives you information. And Topos, Topos Pro and TopCrist also gives you, gives you um, uh, the information about all structures which were uh, determined uh, uh, in the world. And uh, using this information, you can find the relations between uh, different structures, uh, uh, find correlations, composition, structure, property, uh, which uh, is uh, the most important for practice uh, to, to predict uh, property from uh, a given structure. And uh, uh, backward, uh, we can then uh, use uh, this new data, which user provide us uh, uh, to uh, add, the, uh, add this data to our databases, to uh, grow up our data. 
and this also can be done in an automatic way. Uh, uh, besides TopCrist, uh, we also produced a series of databases with uh, particular properties. And uh, this is a battery materials uh, database where the information again extracted from uh, our collections uh, using topological methods are presented uh, with relation to ionic conductivity of uh, uh, materials and uh, this is again the most uh, uh, complete database on uh, ionic conductors uh, the materials which are used in batteries uh, for example in our uh, in our smartphones uh, and uh, uh, different uh, um, different uh, 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 ions uh, uh, also is cons are considered here uh, mobile ions, not only lithium, like in lithium batteries, but also other, uh, other kinds of ions. Uh, this is uh, another database called SACADA. Uh, it contains uh, uh, complete information about carbon allotropes, uh, uh, the materials uh, which are similar to diamond, uh, but not, not diamond. Uh, uh, they are um, uh, constructed from carbon atoms, but the structure of them differs from the diamond structure. And uh, this is again a very, uh, very uh, famous class of structures now and uh, uh, very intensively uh, developing. Uh, uh, also, uh, I said it at the beginning that uh, my main uh, goal here is to show that we have a lot of information that can be processed uh, using standard uh, machine learning methods of or uh, artificial intelligence methods and uh, this is actually our goal our final goal not only to construct databases but to extract uh, some knowledge from these databases the, uh, that, that is what we are doing now and uh, we started also to develop uh, some uh, predictor system uh, which can predict some properties of uh, crystal structures and uh, the first example is uh, this uh, uh, surveys uh, uh, which uh, determines uh, the so-called oxidation state uh, of atoms uh, in crystal structures which uh, this is just one of attributes of atoms uh, but it's not so easy to determine it uh, by hand sometimes. And the system again gives you automatic uh, answer uh, with uh, some probabilities. Uh, if uh, there are different choices, uh, you see the probabilities of uh, 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 the resulting answer. Uh, and again, top, top Christ user, uh, Top Christ is now being used uh, uh, by many people in the world. We have many uh, queries uh, every day uh, from uh, different countries and uh, it shows us uh, that uh, the system is really uh, being used. Now, uh, uh, topological analysis allows us to solve many uh, important tasks uh, in crystal chemistry and material science and to predict uh, many properties actually. Uh, I give here just some examples uh, from uh, uh, our collaboration with different experimental uh, groups. Uh, uh, we are working generally in uh, uh, this way. We ask our colleagues uh, uh, from, let's say, uh, application area, which uh, issues, which problems they have. And then we try together to solve these pro problems uh, using our methods. And this is uh, how we develop our system and uh, also how we, uh, uh, how we uh, learn uh, to predict uh, uh, new structures and their physical properties. Now, just uh, some examples of such collaboration. Uh, this is uh, 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 some uh, new, uh, zeolite. Uh, this is porous framework, porous material, which first uh, was predicted by us uh, 10 years ago and then uh, successfully synthesized uh, in practice by our colleagues from South Korea. Uh, this is uh, our work with uh, German 
colleagues, uh, uh, this is search for new uh, new ion conductors. Uh, in this case, these are sodium conductors. Uh, and uh, uh, from this pyramid, you see that uh, we started from consideration of uh, uh, more than 170,000 uh, entries uh, from the database. Uh, then we uh, step by step uh, processed this data uh, with our methods. And finally, we, we found these uh, 52 most promising conductors. Uh, some of them were already known uh, uh, because uh, the database contained uh, all structures uh, known at, at that time, but some of them were synthesized uh, really, but nobody checked them for ionic conductivity. And our methods showed that uh, this conductivity can exist. And uh, then uh, for some of them, it was proven uh, experimentally. This is uh, another example of our uh, collaboration with uh, Italian uh, research group. Uh, they have uh, uh, the task, uh, they needed some uh, very smooth plates uh, for microelectronics, and they needed to find the, the materials which, which can easily split into such plates. Uh, uh, so, uh, in, in their structures, there should be uh, weak bones between these plates and strong bones inside. And we did this such uh, uh, topological analysis. We found such structures, which uh, such uh, uh, features. And uh, finally, uh, we get uh, experimentally these crystals and you see these uh, plates uh, were perfectly uh, uh, formed uh, uh, from them. And importantly, you cannot do this by mechanical methods. You cannot get such uh, atomically smooth uh, surface uh, using uh, mechanical methods. Uh, one more example is a simulation of crystal growth uh, together with our uh, UK uh, colleagues from Manchester University. Uh, we uh, developed a special program which model uh, shape and surface of uh, crystals uh, from, let's say, first principles from uh, the initial structure represented as uh, tiling. And then uh, we compared these results with uh, uh, experimental uh, data from electronic microscope. And uh, uh, it was shown that uh, uh, the theory here perfectly uh, fits uh, the experiment. So uh, in general, uh, uh, again, uh, we are open for collaboration and uh, for us uh, at, at this stage, it's important to uh, find the people who will be interested in uh, processing uh, such uh, special data and uh, uh, then uh, searching for, uh, uh, for correlations inside them. Uh, we have now in our group some people who work with uh, machine learning methods, uh, but uh, still we need more, <laughs> more experts uh, in this field. Uh, and uh, if some of you uh, will be interested uh, uh, to, uh, to try uh, methods of, uh, uh, of uh, data processing uh, uh, with this uh, special kind of data, we would be very glad. I thank my group in Samara State uh, Technical University and uh, uh, also uh, my friends uh, who participated in this work most uh, strongly and uh, you for your attention. Thank you. Questions? My first question. What database management system we use it in your databases? Uh, 
Thank you. Uh, uh, we use our special uh, database system, so we don't use uh, uh, in Topos Pro. We don't use uh, um, we don't use uh, uh, standard uh, database management systems. We developed uh, it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Topos Pro during uh, thirty years, and uh, at, uh, at the beginning uh, we uh, decided to develop our own system, but. Uh, Concerning uh, um, uh, our uh, uh, online system, uh, we use uh, Postgres uh, system. We use uh, also some uh, uh, SQL-like uh, uh, systems also. Uh, so, uh, of course, for them, uh, we use already standard uh, methods and standard uh, tools to uh, to process with the data. I see its uh, equation is connected with uh, our integration of, of our databases and uh, databases. And uh, second, my question, what parameters of uh, inorganic compounds and crystal structure will you predict uh, using machine learning methods? Uh, uh, as, as mechanical I... ionic conductivity, but Yes, uh, in general, uh, I think uh, uh, we could try at least predict uh, to predict uh, uh, any property which uh, is uh, uh, depend which uh, depends on uh, uh, the structure. Uh, no, strictly speaking, any property, of course, depends on the structure. Uh, so we can at least uh, look uh, if we can do this or not. Because as I said already, uh, uh, we. Uh, uh, developing in uh, this way when the people uh, ask us and uh, uh, present some task uh, formulate some task then we uh, think uh, about uh, uh, possible solutions and uh, very likely we will find it uh, the point is that the structure already contains this information and we need just uh, to find a way to extract this information from this structure and uh, uh, anyway, if uh, uh, in if a particular property in some way depends on uh, topological or geometrical data, uh, we will for sure uh, can we can for sure predict uh, uh, this property. If it uh, depends from other uh, parameters, like, uh, for example, electron density, uh, we need, of course, uh, this information to be included into the, the database and to be processed. Thank you. Questions? Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I have a question which I would ask uh, being a part of data analysis community uh, we noticed that uh, there is an emerging topic which is called topological data analysis and people there they use graph structure of their data and they produce some like they call barcodes they also rely on betty numbers something like that maybe you can comment how these two approaches or views are interrelated what you are doing and what they are doing, maybe they are very close. Yes, uh, there is a special field uh, uh, also in chemistry uh, concerning graph, uh, using graph theory in chemistry. It's uh, quite an uh, old uh, topic, but uh, the point is that uh, uh, all methods, uh, all topological methods in chemistry concern uh, molecules, means finite objects. This is important. Uh, crystal structure is formally infinite objects, object, and it has a special uh, translational symmetry, which is not considered uh, in uh, all other approaches, uh, chemical approaches, uh, graph approaches, etc. For example, uh, when we developed topos, we faced with uh, one problem. We needed to find uh, uh, some subgraph inside crystal structure. And of course, there are um, standard methods to find uh, subgraph inside a graph. But the point is that all these methods and algorithms concern the finite graphs. And uh, but we have here 
infinite graph. And as far as I know, we uh, uh, we needed uh, first, uh, probably uh, in the world, to uh, develop an algorithm uh, which can find a finite graph in an infinite graph. And uh, now Topos Pro can find, for example, any object, any chemical object in crystal structures, uh, even if uh, it, uh, let's say, occupies some special place uh, in this structure. It, uh, uh, it is independent on the complexity of the structure, et cetera, et cetera. So you can easily find also the relations between different structures at this level, uh, topological level. Thanks. Questions? Thank you, Professor Vladov. Uh, oh, sure. ah, sure. Okay. Um, okay. My my question is uh, actually actually you mentioned a lot of a lot of as I can say a lot of details technical details behind these algorithms of extracting topological structures and so on. But uh, well. The interesting stuff is uh, the query language to the uh, these topological structures. Because, for instance, you mentioned some interesting uh, um, query task to find uh, topological uh, these plates that are cl uh, cl closely con uh, connected uh, within mm -hmm. plates and uh, some uh, some some weak uh, connections between plates. So, mm -hmm. so how difficult is to uh, express? Uh, this problem, maybe it's expressible uh, via relational queries, via a set of relational queries. Uh, could you please comment somehow? Uh, okay, thanks uh, for this question. Uh, this concerns uh, uh, really uh, an important problem uh, in all this uh, field. Uh, it concerns uh, first uh, uh, inventing uh, uh, attributes uh, because uh, uh, in our common life uh, we know very well how the objects are, are described we can easily uh, assign attributes uh, to some uh, objects uh, in our uh, let's say uh, common um, uh, field in our common world but uh, in crystals uh, it's uh, not a trivial task to uh, to describe uh, some uh, crystal objects uh, with uh, its attributes. And uh, we have uh, uh, in topological methods uh, uh, also a special way to uh, determine a lot of uh, important attributes for uh, crystal structures. And then resting upon these attributes, we can also formulate uh, queries and uh, uh, descriptors uh, uh, to look uh, for particular objects in uh, databases. For example, here, the, uh, this example about which you talked, uh, uh, here, this X attribute, just uh, uh, just uh, one number, uh, allowed us uh, to find uh, these structures uh, among uh, millions of, not millions, but half million, approximately half million of other structures. This is uh, actually a very exciting example because uh, uh, when uh, Italians ask, asked us uh, to find such structures, we processed about half million structures and found just 11 structures with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, required property. And then uh, when our people went to Italy and synthesized uh, these uh, 11 uh, compounds, 11 substances, all of them uh, uh, fitted uh, this uh, property. So the prediction here was 100%. Uh, 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 it's uh, very rare, of course, a uh, very rare case, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a fact. <laughs> Let's say. So uh, the point is that in general, we have uh, just some set of numbers. We present uh, these uh, attributes as numbers, uh, sometimes as uh, uh, some uh, other uh, features, uh, uh, enumerate, uh, enumeratable features, uh, 
this is also some technical problem to mix uh, different kinds of uh, uh, such attributes in the same query. But uh, uh, anyway, in general, we have just uh, these numbers. And uh, this is also uh, the advantage of uh, this approach. Uh, you can represent uh, a very complicated structure uh, with just uh, some set of uh, formal numbers and then look for them. Any questions, please? Oh, OK. Thank you, Professor Platov. Very interesting lecture, in Thank particular for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.